baked goods. It might sound incredible, but modern large enterprises produce baked goods with minimal human involvement. Workers simply control the process and clean the equipment. What you see on your screen is a bread production line. It consists of a large number of machines that are responsible for the different stages of bread production. One after the other, they perform a full production cycle. The product moves between the machines on special conveyor belts. At first, various ingredients including flour, water, yeast, sugar and salt are loaded into the dough kneader through a system of tubes. After kneading and fermentation, the dough is transferred to the dough divider. Here, the machine portions the resulting mass into single pieces. They may look different depending on the final product. The next production steps are giving the dough the right shape and placing it in an industrial oven for heat treatment. At this factory, the bread, once cooled down, is packed also using special equipment. Bread Packing if you'd like to know more about what happens to buns, loaves and crisp bread once they're baked and cooled down, we're going to show you everything in detail. The specialized equipment on display is manufactured by the Finland-based company Ipeka Automation. It's a whole group of machines, each with its own specific function, and each equipment is truly impressive. The packaging machine, for example, packs 45 products per minute. At the same time, the packaging can differ. The first option is sealing the package with heat, glue or staples. The second option is closing the bag with a clip. Now you're seeing a slicer. Its productivity depends on the selected model and the type of bread. It can vary from 40 to 70 pieces per minute. Also, there are special dispensers that work with small products and sort them by weight or by quantity. Tomato paste Processing lines are used in different areas. Almost any factory can be fitted with such equipment. This is, for example, the tomato paste processing line. Such lines are assembled according to the needs of the client. The raw material can be fresh, peeled, unpeeled, sliced, or even frozen tomatoes. The first two stages go hand in hand and can be performed in any order. We're talking about cleaning the raw materials and sorting them, which can be done by workers or machines. In this case, it's very interesting to see how sorting machines work. They analyze the color, shape, and size of the raw material. Yellow, rotten, and damaged vegetables, as well as those that are too big or too small, are simply removed. This sorting process allows you to make more money, because unlike humans, machines don't rest, don't get tired, do a better job, and don't make mistakes. The next stage is a hot bath, and then these tomatoes are processed by a large number of rotating rubber discs. During these two stages, the tomatoes are peeled. Then, they are sent to a dicer to be chopped into small cubes. The resulting mass is heated to about 70 degrees and then sent to the juice extractor. This machine is equipped with sieves, which gradually remove large pieces and inedible parts such as the core and seeds. Next is the evaporator, which removes excess liquid. The mass becomes thicker and finally turns into a paste. Meat Processing At first glance, the equipment you see on the screen doesn't do anything special. However, if you take a closer look, you'll see that it's a great example of the efficiency of labor automation, and it also works to improve safety. Cutting meat is a much more difficult task than it might seem at first sight. 
For years, even in large factories, people have been responsible for this work, which has regularly led to injuries. As you can see, the blade cuts the meat easily, almost instantaneously. The worker doesn't even have to make an effort. This means that a wrong move can cost you your hand. This automated equipment is designed by Scott Automation and Robotics, a New Zealand company. It moves the carcasses by itself and uses disc blades to cut them. There are no people around, which is why these machines are so useful. On top of that, the machines are faster than the workers. Chocolate Goods Now let's talk about chocolate and how chocolate treats are made at Amul, India's largest chocolate factory. Like in any other factory, everything here starts with the raw materials. Seeds taken from ripe cocoa fruits are first sorted by size because it defines the chemical composition and taste of the future chocolate. The beans are then sent to an oven where they are heated to 140 degrees Celsius. The heat peels the beans. All the shells are then removed using an automated sieve. The peeled cocoa beans must be crushed and reheated, this time to 40 degrees Celsius to get butter and the resulting powder. The mass already looks a bit like chocolate, but it lacks the sugar and various additives such as milk or nuts. If the raw material was not of good quality, then cocoa butter is added. To ensure that the resulting dough is homogenous, special mills thoroughly mix the chocolate. The next stage is the longest one, and it's known as conching. The chocolate is mixed for three days at a constant temperature of 50 to 80 degrees Celsius. Thanks to the conching, foreign smells are removed from the mixture, and it finally acquires the taste we all love. What happens to the chocolate next depends on the factory. If you want chocolate bars, the mass is poured in different molds. If you need other chocolate-covered treats, then chocolate is simply poured on top of them. Orange juice Despite the fact that fruit juice production is not such a complicated process, it is still incredibly interesting to watch, especially since all the work in this factory, which belongs to the bland Valencina, is made by machines. After the sorting process, the unpeeled fruit is sprayed with water to remove any dirt. Next, the quality and quantity of the juice depends on how it is extracted. There are two types of equipment. The first one has a stationary knife that slices the fruit in half. Then they're picked up by suction cups and placed on special plastic heads. They rotate and squeeze out the juice. The next one pierces the oranges and then squeezes them to extract the juice. Both treatments may seem intricate, but these are the only options, because it's the only way to avoid the juice from coming into contact with the peel, which makes it bitter. But even if the juice ends up being bitter, the taste can be changed chemically. The next and final stages are filtration, i.e. removing the peel and seeds, pasteurization and bottling. Popcorn The last equipment we'll show you today is another processing line, this time for popcorn production. The equipment consists of several machines that work so smoothly that they're able to produce 130 to 150 kilos of ready-to-eat popcorn every hour. So, what exactly do these machines do? The first one is a popcorn machine which works with unpopped corn, that is, with the raw material. The high temperature makes the kernels explode and turn into the popcorn we all know and love. It's noteworthy that, in this case, the corn is heated using hot air. Oil isn't used, which has a good effect on the quality of the finished product, and it allows the company to save some money. The next equipment is a sieve, which removes the kernels that didn't pop. And that's basically it. Popcorn can either be packed or sent to a station where it will be poured with caramel or sprinkled with flavor additives. By the way, the manufacturer of this processing line is Turkish company Zerv Extrusion.